Hey guys, welcome back to Dip Switch Demos. My name is Jackson and today I'm going to tell some pedal stories. If you guys didn't know already, I have launched a new website and with the new website is a blog that I'm writing. Um, every couple of weeks, maybe every week or every couple of weeks, I don't know, I'm going to write a little piece. Um, just if you're interested, go ahead and read what's going on there. The most recent blog up there was uh, pedal stories or the pedals that mean the most to me. I picked four pedals um, and kind of explained a little behind the scenes about those pedals, why they mean something to me other than just the sound, you know, because sound believe it or not, is not always the most important thing when it comes to owning and buying pedals. I really think how the pedal makes you feel, what's you know what's going on in your life around the purchase of the pedal, whatever, is a really important part of owning pedals. So first up on the list is the J Rocket Archer. Um, I'm sure you've all seen these pedals, this pedal around the place. It is essentially a great clone, clone type thing. But it was also my first ever boutique expensive pedal. Um, saved up for ages for it. I was just over the moon with it. Couldn't be happy with it. And still one of the best sounding clone circuits I've ever tried. It's really, really a great pedal. And the reason why it's kind of on this list is because no other pedal has, well I don't think so, no other pedal has ever changed my tastes in guitar tones as much as this one has. I always have to have a clon type pedal on a board now. I just there's something about that circuit and that sound that I just love. And this pedal started that all off for me. Arguably it started the whole pedal craze off for me. Like I said it was my first ever boutique pedal. Really got me interested in all these different builders and things like that. And it's also the first ever demo on this YouTube channel. And it's not actually a bad demo. It's very different to what I do now. Um, but it was a pretty good demo and yeah this pedal means a lot to me and I will never ever sell it. The next pedal on the list is uh, one that I wouldn't be able to sell even if I wanted to. I don't want to sell, but the reason why I can't sell it is because it's got my name written on it and that's why it's important to me. It's because it's my first ever piece of gear, well it's the only bit of gear out there that's got my name on it. Dip Switch, Jackson, this is awesome. Um, if you didn't know, it's a Yannis Altmanis Meesneaks X. It's a deluxe version of the Meesneaks, a really cool, one of my favorite uh, distortion pedals out there from Latvia, of all places. And I really didn't know that this was gonna arrive and it just arrived on my doorstep, looked a bit closer and it's got my name on it. I mean, how cool is that? Um, yeah, but I wouldn't be able to sell it for anything, even if I wanted to. Um, yeah, really, really grateful for Giannis for putting my name on a pedal. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, that's why it means something to me. The next pedal on the list is the Chase Bliss Audio Mood. Um, and this is on the list for a slightly different reason than the other ones. It represents a big turning point in my life and my career. Um, I was, a year or so ago, I was working a pretty dead-end job in retail, selling computers and things like that. Starting to get me down. Um, really didn't have time for YouTube, music, anything. Anything that I wanted to do, anything I was passionate about. Um, so I decided I really need to change this, even if it means you know not earning any money for the time being, I really need to change this up. So I handed in my notice and I decided with my last paycheck I was gonna get some, myself something special, something to kind of get me in the right frame of mind for kind of getting back into music and YouTube. And this was that purchase, the Chase Bliss Audio Mood. I love everything about this pedal. The look, the collaboration between Chase Bliss, Old Blood Noise and Drolo. If you didn't know that this is kind of a three-way collaboration pedal. Three-way? Uh, um, and yeah, it's just awesome. It never sounds the same, uh, which is I, one of my favorite things about it. You know, you n I never know what I'm gonna get when I turn it on. Yeah, I love this pedal so much, and like I said, it represents a big turning point in my life. The final pedal on this list is the Boss BF2 flanger. Um, but it's not just any flanger, it's not just any Boss BF2 flanger, it is a vintage made in Japan, 84 I think, 83, 84, and it's just pretty special. It sounds great. Not only was this my first ever piece of vintage gear, I still don't really own any pieces of vintage gear, this is it, um, but this was also my first Boss pedal. Before this, I really wasn't a big fan of Boss at all. I hadn't really played any pedals, but I thought they were kind of cheap, ugly, a bit boring as well, um, but this has really changed my opinion on Boss. 
and yeah now i own more boss pedals than any other manufacturer i think so yeah this really changed my mindset on boss not only that but is also a really nice vintage piece of gear and like i said i will never sell this pedal so there you go four pedals and what they mean to me you know not only do these four pedals sound great but they have a hidden meaning or a kind of story underneath that. If you guys have any other similar stories to tell with your own pedals, then I'd really, really love to hear them. Leave a comment below and let's talk about some pedals that we don't just own because of the sound of them. Um, so that's pretty much it for today's video. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and maybe check out some more. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.